<laughs> Day four of the advent of code. Today, it's all about scoring scratch cards. And I gotta tell you, sometimes for Christmas with the family, we do scratch cards just for fun. And it's always so difficult to know if you won or not. So it's actually great to hear there is somebody else on the planet, there is an elf who is having the same problem. So let's help them see if they won 1 million gold coins or not. Okay, this is the input file. Let's see how it works. First of all, each line is a scratch card. The first set of numbers is the winning numbers we have for that scratch card. And the second set of numbers is all of the numbers we got on that scratch card. So we first need to check how many numbers, how many winning numbers we have, and then we need to score them and sum the score for each scratch card. The scoring works as follows. If you have zero winning numbers, you get zero. If you have one winning number, you get one. If you have two winning numbers, you get two. If you have three winning numbers, you get four, and it keeps doubling up. Okay, the solution uh, for part one goes as follows. We have a part one function that starts at zero points and a function that calculates the score for each game, for each card, which, which is pretty much doubling up the amount of points given the winning numbers. And then we pass that input file and the score game function to run. Okay, the run function is where the magic happens. First of all, we go through the input file line by line and we remove all of the things that come before colon space, which we just actually don't need. Then we get um, the rest of the line, which is the winning numbers and the numbers we got. So we can split those two and then we create a set of winning numbers. A set is represented by a map where the key is a string which is the number in string form, and bool, which is true, of course, when the element is present in the set. And then we create a count variable, which we fill with the amount of winning numbers for the specific scratch card. And then we call the score game function, giving it the amount of winning numbers for that specific scratch card, and we give it an index uh, which is coming out of the for loop up here, plus one because, of course, the i uh, index starts at zero. Okay, part two is a bit more twisty, so listen to me carefully. This is the way it works. We still have scratch cards where the first set of numbers is the winning numbers and the second set of numbers is the numbers we got on that scratch card. Now, instead of scoring, what we do is that we have to create copies of the subsequent scratch cards uh, as many times as we have winning numbers. So this is how it works. Let's say that scratch card one has three winning numbers. This means that we need to create one copy of scratch card two, one copy of scratch card three, and one copy of scratch card four. Then we go to card two, and let's say it has two winning numbers. So we need to create a copy of scratch card three and a copy of scratch card four. But since we have two scratch card two, we need to do it once again. So this is what happens. We go through all of the cards doing this sort of thing. And then at the end, we need to count how many cards we have on the table. And that is our score. Okay, so this is how I solved it. We have a part two function where we create a dictionary, a map, where the key is the ID of the scratch card and the value is how many copies of that scratch card we have. Now, the score game function now uh, works a bit differently. If, so when we're scoring the scratch card, we check if we have that scratch card for that ID in the dictionary. If we don't, we say that we have one. This pretty much only happens for the first scratch card. And then we loop uh, through the winning numbers. Count is the, the amount of winning numbers we have. And we add copies of the subsequent scratch cards, as you know, I pretty much explained 
at the beginning of the section. And then our points is pretty much the sum of all of the copies that we have in the dictionary. And that's day four of the advent of code. I guess my functional side is taking over because it's the second day in a row that I'm using first class functions to solve the problem. But who knows? Let me know what you would have done differently in the comments and I'll see you for the next one.